yeah, motivations could be, uh, well, phishing motivations could be uh, uh, financial scams, could be uh, ransomware, could be disruption of services. And you pointed out in your presentation, espionage as well, yes. right? Um, and what do we know about all these um, uh, threat actors? You know, they say that when it comes to phishing and AI, which is a topic of your presentation, it is uh, putting the tools of nation state actors into average uh, cyber criminals, right? Exactly. exactly. So what, what, what have you seen so far? Is it uh, making uh, phishing a lot easier for the cyber criminals? Uh, you have uh, absolutely pronounced a very good word like called threat actor. So the one who has the capability and most importantly the determination makes him the threat actor. Nowadays, a person cap having a capability of laptop and internet can become a hacker. Before 10 years, it was very difficult for a person to become a hacker because he needs to learn different programming languages. He needs to under understand the concept of programming. And now, AI has helped to make a program for you. AI has helped you to, to transcript all the things to, to actually trick the user. It also, uh, it also helps the user an intruder to make a sophisticated email, to write down what the needs of the user, to make it more convincing to the user. And for for instance, I have observed for last one year that there are a lot of threat actors coming in the in on the ground, and they, they are new. What we have observed that how they are new, they are just using the simple techniques. They use a sophisticated phishing email that cannot be detected by the spam filters and can be landed within an organization and they got compromised the user by just attempting to perform the ransom attack, attempting to do a fraudulent activity, scams user and all the fraud frauds related to the cyber activities. We have observed that in the last one year the threat actor count has increased to hundreds and from different origins like not it's from Russia or China, but now those countries which we haven't seen threat actors are coming from those areas. And we need to perform the geofencing against those countries which we are not expecting them that there, there would be a rising of those threat actors from such countries who have, we haven't observed for last 10 years, we have observed in the one year. So phishing as a tool, uh, sorry, phishing as a service, right, has been around for quite some time. Are you seeing that these uh, services are, you know, being distributed uh, more cheaply, quicker, and to a wider sort of uh, interested uh, part, criminal parties? Exactly. You really uh, pitch up the exact thing that uh, the hackers are actually. Uh, first of all, I, I let you know that this was this service was previously sold on dark web. Now it is sailing on the surface web. It's available on the internet and it's available for those users who doesn't know the technicalities of the system. So how it is possible that whether that there was a dilemma we used to have that we need to go to dark web to find such services. Now we don't need to go to dark web. The services are available on surface web. Uh, and the user just need to pay some hundreds of dollars to compromise thousands of dollars of organization. And it is very embarrassing for the organization. And it's a rep, rep, you, you can see that a reputation loss, a financial loss is there. But for the organization, they, they have the prestige of doing work. And just by doing the surface web, they have the ability to, to perform that attack against uh, such services. Yeah, the victim pool is uh, been uh, broadened and exactly. expanded. Uh, exactly. uh, and also with the chat GPT and Gen AI, uh, not to pick on chat GPT, but with Gen AI, you uh, mentioned earlier that uh, the threat actors are also using the latest AI tools to craft uh, quite uh, convincing emails, but also translating, you know, languages into into foreign languages that they may not, you know, even speak. So exactly. that's really expanding the victims pool, isn't it? Absolutely. Earlier, is what it was. Uh easy to detect those perpetrators uh, by just spelling mistakes, language change, dot, comma, colons, and most importantly, the way and the behavior they communicate with. But now with the help of AI, they have the capability to, try to make you a very convincing email in your language and a very sophisticated email sends to the user asking them and it's not an urgency it's it's previously we 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 pick up some data set data, data points like urgency spelling mistakes uh, the the way the email was written uh, in a format so we understand the format now ai has just 
wipe it out all the thing the email will be convincing it won't be having any spelling mistake anymore it will be a sophisticated email a very formal pattern will be written so it's very difficult for a user to understand and and uh, and can be tricked using such emails yeah and now with gen ai and your presentation earlier voice cloning right is raising the game even further right for the threat actors yeah the game has become easier for the threat actor by just cloning the voice because for the non technical user he only sees he only he only listen the voice note the that non techy user cannot go in deep by examining the voice notes by just doing the forensic of those voices they cannot synthesize as they cannot assess the pitch of the voices um how easy is it for them to do this voice cloning i think you mentioned like you need only 30 seconds is you need only 30 second of a laptop an internet and a browser having a web page open three three things and that's it a simple voice note of a person who is speak with you with a 30 second can you imagine that 30 second voice note can can actually uh, uh, capturing the life saving of a person like thousands of dollars they can they can it can be vanished from the account of a user by just perpetrating the voice of a mother perpetrating the voice of the family perpetrating the voice of a person in in terms that he is stuck in a situation he is stuck in in some type of kidnapping or somewhere and the money gone So is it like a spear phishing then in that uh, uh voice cloning is being applied to or can it be like mass sort of uh phishing attacks Threat detector are using this spear phishing technique where they specifically target the specific individual of an organization and they deliberately send emails and they they know that this is our target and they they work on the target they see the background check they saw their LinkedIn profile and they find the interest and hobbies in the Facebook and their Insta reels they they likes and dislike and once they do all the homework then they prepare a, and this the, they create a custom made scenario for those in the specific individual in order to hit directly and uh, make a massive breach out of it um this is something that you didn't really touch on very deeply at your presentation deep fakes now so applying deep fakes uh, or complementing or supplementing voice cloning with deep fakes makes it even more sophisticated attack isn't it or convincing attack definitely once the voice is cloned so the, maybe the family would ask that i need to see the proof of evidence i need to see the video so using deep fake it can also be made because of the because we have published our lot of pictures on facebook and hackers only need 15 pictures of an individual to make a very 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 similar clone of video of an individual 15 picture can make your video clone can you imagine so those 15 picture we can also make a voice video note of a user that i am stuck i am here i am i am i am in a trouble please help me so 15 pictures not 15 videos no no 15 pictures only pictures you you publish thousands of pictures on the facebook i am talking about 15 pictures uh yeah so thank you so much for your time sir to uh, to share with us you know on phishing and uh, voice cloning and deep fakes and how uh, the game is been raised even further by our uh, Gen AI, but one last uh, question, if I may, um, one last tip for our users. I just want to tell the user that today, this is the war with with the technology versus technology. Before that, it was the war with technology with the people. Now we are we are in the war situation with technology versus technology. So you have to be aware the technology which you are in hand. We you need to very much careful what you are actually publishing, what you what you are sharing over the internet. Don't undeliberately publish that information which might cause you a massive disasters and losses. Yeah, that's a very important point actually. Uh, you know, we share quite a bit of information about ourselves on social media and. uh there is always a risk that threat actors right can use those information and exploit any sort of uh personal data to conduct a campaign against you in a spear phishing campaign so normally when people actually upload some content and they thought that it is private to me that is not actually private that has already gone to the cloud so Uh, this is my humble request to all the users as a as a influencer in cyber security i must recommend that people should not upload massive data on the internet all that like family gathering individuals and uh, the interest and likes dislike this could create a profile of an individual to become victim 
be aware when you are publishing information over the internet it should be kept remained with you it should be with the limited group or the audience you are sharing with and do not share your information with those who you don't know who certainly adds you on facebook linkedin or any other face social media you uh, and you think that i i don't know that person and he's asking me and he's he's actually exploring my personal data so please be aware from such users they are actually perpetrators and they try to get information from you as as much as they can